Lima, the beautiful, vibrant, bustling capital city of the country of Peru. Join us as we embark on a journey exploring the streets and corners of this beautiful South American city. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, hi, my name is Prisha. I'm a single mom and digital nomad who's been traveling full time with my baby since he was five weeks old. Hit that subscribe button if you'd like to follow our travels. Now, me and Elian had just finished up our month and a half in Ecuador and we were now headed to the airport so that we could fly to our next country, Peru. And you may be thinking, I saw another guy in the clips from the hook. Yes, that is my brother. He flew in from Canada to join our Peruvian adventures. I had this vegan burger at the airport, which was really just grilled veggies in a bun, as Elian had a cozy nap. And then we were off to board our two hour flight to Lima. I flew with Latam, an airline I got to know very well during my Latin American travels. The flight was direct Guayaquil to Lima and it costed me 337 US dollars. That is including seat selection and a checked bag. Halfway through the flight, I discovered an empty row, so I decided to steal a window seat and the little guy fell asleep, fast asleep in my arms for nap number two. He woke up just in time for landing, so I snuck back to our seat in the front of the plane so we could disembark quickly, and there we are in Lima, Peru! Now I'm gonna let you in on a little secret about transportation from Lima Airport. Use rideshare apps like Uber or Didi to get you to your accommodation for a fraction of the price of a taxi. However, you need to know that the taxi drivers don't like the Uber or Didi drivers operating there, so they're very low-key about it. This means that the driver will contact you to ask you where you, where you are, what you look like, so they can come in and find you. They'll usually park in the parking lot and wait until they pick up a ride on the app. Now, I recommend downloading a free texting app such as TextNow or getting an eSIM ahead of time with an app like Aralo and signing up to the app with that number so that communication is smooth. Yes, it will be a lot less complicated with a taxi, but you'll be paying a premium. So here's my Airbnb. It was nice and spacious. It had a living room slash kitchen. The kitchen was fully equipped with an oven. I always love having an oven. I had a nice big sink to bathe my baby in. Lots of different equipment for cooking. And there was a bedroom with two beds, a single bed for my brother who would arrive in a month, and the double bed for me and Elian. It had a few extra chairs and a bathroom which had hot water, but there was actually a little bit of an issue when we first arrived with the hot water, but they ended up figuring out apparently there was some switch that wasn't done properly. They also had laundry that was a few steps, uh, not a few steps, <laughs> a few floors up. We had to go up to do our laundry and then go all the way to the top of the building to hang up our clothes, but it was good exercise for sure and I actually used the stairs in that place to do cardio with him on my back, which definitely worked out. And the TV was nice there. They had a smart TV that had YouTube, Netflix, everything you need, and the Wi-Fi was fast as well. I hadn't eaten anything since that glorified veggie bun, so I hopped on Rappi, which is a food delivery app, and to my delight, there was an all-vegan restaurant. I ordered a pesto pasta with crispy battered oyster mushrooms, tofu nuggets, fries, yuccas, a cinnamon bun, and a cookie. I went a little crazy on this order. Does anyone else do the same when they're hungry? Let me know in the comments below. Everything was delicious, except for the tofu nuggets. They were kind of dry and flavorless, but everything else hit the spot and I was ready to lie down and get some rest before exploring Lima with my baby. Okay guys, we are taking a tuk-tuk to the beach. I asked um, our Airbnb host how to get there walking. He was like, don't go there, it's dangerous. Or it can be dangerous. But, I don't know, I started walking towards an area that he suggested. That's literally just like a street. And then, um, baby's a little whiny, he wants to get put in the carrier. So put him in the carrier. And then there's a tuk-tuk tuk stop right beside us. And I was like, you know what, let me just ask him about the beach and if it would be safe and how much it would cost. And he only charged me five souls to get to the beach. I just have to basically walk down a little bit. And he told me that there's a big security there, like police particularly just for that area and that it won't be dangerous, so let's go check it out and see how it is. I know I called it a tuk-tuk, that's the name I'm used to, but in Peru they are called mototaxis. Basically little taxis powered by motorcycles, as the name suggests, and they normally take you on short trips within neighborhoods. For longer trips you want to take an Uber or Didi, or you can take a regular taxi as well. Hey guys, so this is where he let me off. I honestly, I don't know what I was expecting. Um, I didn't have anything particular in mind. I know that Lima doesn't have, is known for having like a super beautiful beach and also like the weather is not like a super warm place for beaches but there's a huge highway right in front of the beach because it's a tuk tuk you can only drop me off on this street here and you can see that there's a lot of um big trucks i think it's sand but there's a little bit kind of like construction beach or something down there and 
I have no idea how I'm gonna get down there. Nor do I know if I even want to go all the way down there. I think I'm just gonna walk this direction. Can I just see where it takes me? Look, there's some people paragliding. That would be fun. I'll have to wait some time before I can paraglide with a baby. <laughs> well, he has to not be a baby. We're about to arrive at some street art. I see ahead of us. San Miguel, siempre contigo, always with you. Siempre contigo. There it says, Hagamos en Peru que nos te gusto. We're making a Peru that we like. That we love, that we enjoy. San Miguel is one of the 43 districts of the city. It's actually closer to the airport than the Doriste areas, and that's where I stayed for my month in Lima. You guys, we're here at this little lookout point. And at this lookout point, there are little stairs here. You can go down to get to the beach. And if you see in the distance there, there's a little boat. I don't know what they're doing, they're just chilling along the shoreline. But I don't think I'm gonna go down all these stairs with the stroller. It's not gonna be worth it. It's pretty cold, then I'm gonna have to come back up to Continue walking. What I noticed in San Miguel is that there are several security stations around the district. There will be people working inside 24-7, monitoring live footage of the streets and parks. I felt safer and more comfortable walking around with my baby, knowing that the system was in place. Alright, cue my brother's arrival in 3, 2... Okay, we just got back from the store, we bought a bunch of things for breakfast, and Eliane's been <laughs> a Reese. <laughs> Get all these things up, he's eating this croissant. What do you think? It's pretty solid. No, it's, uh, it's like a lot... What's the word for it? It's less buttery than like a typical croissant would be, and... Not very much. It's good. Nice, nice. What would you rate out of 10? Seven. Okay, okay. Yeah. Nice, nice. Let's do that. So what do we have here? Some we have one puyo and one queso. <laughs> Pollo, not puyo. Pollo. <laughs> <laughs> Which is chicken and cheese. This one I believe is a chicken, it looks like it. And how are you feeling? I know you said you're feeling nervous. I'm a little nervous, you know. I'm just not used to the street foods, so we bought this one from a vendor outside a market. Um, or at the bakery, so you know I'm a little nervous, but yeah, I was saying afterwards I felt bad because um, she seemed trustworthy. There, there's a long line in the bakery, and they had tamales. And then when we got there, there's no line, and I was just like, oh yeah, maybe they're out. And I was like, oh, you know, she's selling tamales right outside. You when, know, how, how, how how far do I go? I just keep unraveling it. Yeah, until it's like no more wrap. Okay. There we go. You're at the final layer. Okay. All you right. can just toss the leaves if you want. Sure. Looks like the masa is made with some kind of like chili or tomato because it's colored and there's a lot of spices in there. Alright. Do I heat it up or do I just eat it? Up to you, man. Fuck okay. it. Looks like there's an olive right in the middle. Oh, it looks like you missed in the dough so far. Oh god, filling it. What do you think? Oh, there we go. Let's see what's that filling. The chicken and an olive. Yep. Alright. I'm nervous, man. Gotta do it. Yeah, it's good. Um, yeah. What does it taste like? I don't know how to explain this stuff, but... The dough? Yeah, the chicken is good. It's really fatty and I like the fat. It's juicy. <laughs> Sorry, but, <I'm> vegan. <laughs> but uh, this stuff, I don't know how to explain. It's kind of like... Kind of like corny, like... Yeah, it's made from corn. Oh. Corn flour. There you it's go. It's made from this stuff. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. That, like, that, ah, it, it's good. It's interesting. I'm probably good with that. I'll try the other one, too, just because, but... And this is a little olive you got in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. You don't know how you feel about the dough? I don't. You might not be that into tamales, then. It, it's also, I feel like it takes time to get used to that texture. Yeah. Yeah, these are just new flavors, you know? I'm not used to yeah. it. Yeah. All good. All good in the hood. We're out here drying. So tamales here in Peru, they make them with corn husks. With corn husks. Um, but in where in Colombia, they make them with banana leaves. So 
Every country they do it a little bit differently. Go, go. Okay, this is a cheese one. All right, I'm just gonna break it in half this time. Yeah. Okay, I wonder what that uh, colored thing is. Yeah. You don't like it? No, it's on me now. <laughs> Yeah, Guys, we're just off to take our Uber. We are headed to... Where are we headed to again? The center, right? Yeah. Alright, we're headed to the main square. We had a nice scenic Uber ride to the center of Lima with the beautiful cliffs to the left side and the nice coastline to our right. También tenía un bien conversación con el conductor. Nos dio unos consejos sobre Lima, en particular donde encontrar comida rica. Los Uber y Didi son súper fáciles de tomar en la ciudad. Me parece que siempre había mucha cerca en todas las esquinas de la ciudad. Apenas estamos llegando a la plaza central. Okay. En la noche es muy bonito esto cuando se ilumina. Sí. ¿Cómo se llama? No, es una construcción antigua normal. Ah, ok. Llena de oficinas. Ahí en la derecha estaba el Palacio de Justicia. No le hemos visto. En el Sheraton también hemos pasado. Bueno. Entonces, ¿son sobre Bolivia? ¿Es nombre? Sí, de hecho, sí. Es como que la ciudad de Lima no ha olvidado el Lima. Y los arcos. Ah, ok. Que son pasadizos de los edificios principales. Es el monumento de los congresos para el ministerio. Antes, cuando la política se hacía directo, face to face, uh -huh. acá se hacían los, las discusiones políticas. Los políticos se presentaban, había un montón de gente. Ah, de aquí de la política. Hoy día es domingo, no hay mucho comercio, pero acá en, este, en estos pasadizos hay comercio. Uh -huh. Guys, we have arrived. We're here in the center of Lima. And so far the vibes are super nice. I really like the architecture here, the buildings are really nice, really beautiful. You can see in the background here, there's like a little church back there, sandy background. What do you think about the vibes so far? Yeah, it's beautiful. Like you said, the architecture is really cool. I can't wait to get some food after my tamale and tomatoes. <laughs> yeah, the tamales were not as expected. So. You, gotta, you gotta try though, right? Yeah. You never hey, they could have been the best tamales in the world. I just yeah. don't know, so. They unfortunately weren't, let's just be honest, but you know. Um, we're gonna see if we'll find some better food, so let's go see. Oh yeah, one more thing. Actually, Lima is known to be the food capital of South America, so we definitely should be finding some good food. And we're gonna find it. We're gonna make sure we do. As of 2024, the metropolitan area of Lima has a recorded population of 11.3 million people, making it second most populous city in South America, right after Sao Paulo, where I will be visiting a few vlogs down, so subscribe so you don't miss it. So this is the main large plaza here called the Plaza de Armas. There are a bunch of old buildings We're surrounded by palm trees. And there's tons of people from Peruvian locals to tourists all around. We're gonna go look for some food. The driver told us that there's places around here near like some arcs. I'm not sure what exactly what arches he was talking about, but we're gonna figure that out. And let's see what we can find. Palm trees are like reminiscent of Hawaiian palm trees, to be honest. As we walked, we noticed a vegetarian restaurant, but Reese did not want to have any vegetarian food, so there happened to be a little bakery next door with empanadas and pastries. We headed over there to get some stuff for him to go. The Lima food scene is vibrant and diverse, and the fare is a blend of indigenous ingredients with Spanish, African, and Asian influences. Some typical dishes of the region are ceviche, Peru's national dish, anticuchos, causa, lomo saltado, and aji de gallina. The national cocktail of Peru is the pisco sour. My brother ended up getting two empanadas. One was ham and cheese, and the other was aji de gallina. The friendly guy at the bakery also upsold him on this little dessert called turron de doña pepa. We headed over next door to the veggie place, 
and they had no problem with him eating his empanadas there so we sat down and i ordered a vegan lomo saltado made from mushrooms okay guys let's try this we have some brown rice here let's go in from one of this is a fry i've never had a stir fry with fries inside of it you want some Like Satan or something. Mm. Yeah, so it's basically like a stir fry. Really, really good. It's got broccoli, onions, brown rice. Delicious. Mm, like this. I think this is one of their varieties of potato. <laughs> <laughs> what we got here? Um, Ají de gallina. Aquí tenemos la Basílica y Convento de Santo Domingo. Estaba construido en 1530. Este fue el mismo periodo en que los españoles convencieron a los nativos que necesitaban convertirse al catolicismo y lo convirtieron en la única religión aceptada en el país hasta 1920 donde se introdujo la constitución que permitía la libertad de religión. El construcción original duraba 50 años, pero por unos terremotos fue necesario construirlo de nuevo unas veces. Lima was colonized by Francisco Pizarro, originally naming the city Ciudad de los Reyes, which means City of the Kings, though the name didn't last long. The city was chosen as one of Spain's main vice royalties. What is a vice royalty? Basically, it was a large territory ruled by a king or queen from overseas, in this case, Spain. And each vice royalty had a governor making decisions on the king or queen's behalf. However, these decisions often exploited and oppressed the native people who had been there long before Spanish arrival. They enslaved the natives, robbed their land, and imposed on them their culture and tradition. We got this drink, which is the national drink. Show them what it looks like. This is the Inca Cola, the national drink of Peru, almost like Colombia. <laughs> what does it taste like? Um, it just tastes like a normal like pop. I don't really drink too much pop, so I wouldn't really be able to tell you. But yes, only you can Like a, maybe like a, I don't know, Sprite. But I don't know if that does it justice. It's really good. Let me get inside. Watch it. Look how yellow it is. I don't, I don't drink pop like ever, so. Yeah, you're right. It's hard to describe. I have no idea what to call that. Yeah, it's good. Okay, so right behind me, this is a little neighborhood. Usually here in Latin America, the neighborhoods that are higher up, it's the opposite of countries like America and Canada, where like the higher the hills is where the wealthier people live. Here in Latin America, usually it's where the poor people live. But as you can see, I don't know if you noticed, there's a little cross up there. I mean, it's not little, but it looks little from here. And there's a bit of a lookout point. My brother were discussing maybe going to go go up there. But I think it'd be a cool view. Yeah. Okay. So, I don't know. Let's see. Let's see how how it is to get up there. We obviously order an Uber because we don't want to walk through a dangerous neighborhood. But you know, we'll think about it. We'll think about it. We found the Peruvian people to be warm and friendly, extremely hospitable, hardworking, and family centric. Guys, here's the river. No idea what it's called. But as you can see, the water is really rushing, but there's not much of it. Definitely a little bit dirty, the water. But, oh, look, there's a train. Is that a train or is that just a bus? And, uh, I don't know, I think it's just a, a truck. truck. <laughs> so after experiencing like actual gunshot, when I was in Cali, I was like, hey, gunshot, real gunshots are really like, freaking loud. Yeah. I mean, obviously, obviously it's a circle here too, but. Oh, there's another church down there. Sick. Where we are, it's busy. Yeah, well, we're in the center. Yeah. Oh, there's a church over there. <laughs> Terminará, al fin todo 
We decided to change the scenery in Hata Mira Flores. We hopped in a taxi, opting to just wave one down instead of going through the hassle of ordering an Uber. And the price was similar to the apps. The airport seemed to be the place where prices were jacked up. And I will say, I spoke Spanish, so if you don't, chances are higher that you'll be gouged a bit more. So try to learn a few basic phrases. Here, let me teach you some basic phrases right now. Hola is hi. Como estas is how are you. Cuanto vale means how much does it cost. A donde vas means where are you going. Or if you want to say I'm going or I want to go somewhere, you can say quiero irme a Miraflores, which means I want to go to Miraflores. Voy a Miraflores means I'm going to Miraflores. Where's the bathroom? Donde está el baño? Hey guys, so we are now in Miraflores, which is like a really common tourist area. This is where actually Reese is going to get picked up for his bus when he heads over to Paracas, Huacachina, and eventually to Arequipa to meet me there. Um, actually, his bus, he's taking, what's called it? Think, no, not sure. Pru Hop, right? Sing Pru Hop, it's going to stop. It may stop along the way, all the way up to Cusco. And I'm going to meet him there. I, at first, was going to do the bus with him, but because of the baby and um, one of the stops is Puno, which is a very, very high altitude, like the highest lake in the world, actually. And um, I was just worried it would affect the baby. So I decided I'm going to fly to Arequipa, stay there for five days, and go to Cusco. Anyways, he's going to pick up here, but there's some live music going on behind us. It's about 5.30, so we have an hour left until the sun starts heading. It's golden hour right now. And we're just going to buy some dinner. Oh my goodness! <laughs> and yeah, we'll show you guys what we eat in there. Let me tell you the average cost of living in Lima. It's about $500 for an apartment in the city center, $4 for a cheat meal, $30 for a mid-range three-course meal for two people, $2 for a pint of beer, $3 for a cappuccino, $0.50 cents for a small bottle of water, and $30 for a monthly gym membership. All of the figures were in US dollars. Some things Lima are known for is its diverse population, its vibrant cultural scene, and its dynamic economy. Some challenges the city faces are traffic congestion, pollution, and socioeconomic inequality. As we were walking and looking for food, we were passing by this park and we saw people feeding all these stray cats and we just had to stop and see the cuties getting fed. In all of Latin America, you're gonna notice there are stray dogs and cats all along the streets. So guys, we found a vegan restaurant called El Seitan. We're gonna go check it out. I convinced my brother to go have vegan food with me. <laughs> At first, we were gonna find a restaurant that has options for vegans and non-vegans, but then he was like, you know what? The vegan food at the place that you had for lunch was bad. I regret not getting it, so. We decided we're gonna go to vegan restaurant. We're almost there and hopefully it's good. So guys, I am just about to reach my 10 year vegan anniversary in a few months and it's very exciting. I've been vegan for a long time and I have been traveling for five years now. So every place that I go to, I always search for a vegan restaurant that has local food. Now this restaurant had vegan ceviche, which we ordered, which was made from mushrooms. We also ordered a bunch of different seitan stuff because this place is called seitan. Seitan is a plant-based meat substitute made of wheat gluten. It's made by making a wheat dough and then rinsing it like crazy until all the starch is gone, leaving you with a big mass of protein that can be flavored, cooked, and used in a number of dishes. We also got some cauliflower wings, but our favorite was this delicious mashed potato gravy and seitan. What up, what up, beautiful people? It's day two of our adventures here in Lima, and today we are going paragliding. We're gonna be flying, I like birds. This is gonna be my second time doing it. I did it once before in Turkey, in Padilla, uh, but this time we're gonna be flying like near buildings and also over the beach as well, so it's gonna be a different experience. How are you feeling, Reese? So, no way. Let's do it, let's do it. He was saying how there's a chance we're gonna die today, so let's find out if we die or not. So, Ryan, Reese is about to get set up here. Oh, man. The guy with parachute. <laughs> you die, what? If I die, I don't know, just tell my family and friends I love them. Alright, well, while I'm here, you tell me. Yeah, love you. Love you too. Uh, we'll stick it inside. You don't want to put that on back. I do. I got a few right now, but I'll just. You want to go off to the side somewhere? Yeah. What if you pee in the sky because you're scared? Oh, I just pee myself. Are you sure you don't want to actually, like, try and go? It's probably the gnarliest thing I've ever done. 
Yeah, I did. Just go pull to the side and run. I go rush off and do the motion. Yeah, well, I want to tell you that once when I was a kid, I went on the uh, roller coaster ride. Oh no, it was like some kind of ride, like you know, a lap locker. Can you take over there? Yep. Oh, I mean, I'll come with you. Just help me not do it. Look, that's basically this one is different from the one I did in Turkey. They're literally like in a little go kart, and then it's gonna like just, just like run board. up here. Sorry. Um. I mean, they said. Let me ask. Hola, disculpa. También van a grabar para por gratis también, verdad? Bueno. Bueno. Él. Nadie se murió. Nadie se murió antes. Bueno, I asked if anyone died before. He said no, they're professionals. Yo primera vez él no. Oh no no, perdón. Él primera vez yo no. Pero antes lo hice corriendo desde arriba, no en algún cosa así. Ajá. Ah, okay. ah, también lo hacen. Pero creo que eso es más chévere. <laughs> he was asking if it's the first time, and he was saying, you know the type where you run and do off a cliff? He said they do that in Mira Flores. Um, the one that I did before, where you're not in this thing, and you just run off a cliff? They do that in Mira Flores. Donde van? Okay. Because it's calm up there now, you can go in further too and then come back. Okay. ¿Y cuánto tiempo dura? Okay. Oh, it's Fifteen. Okay. <laughs> it's gonna feel like longer, I'm sure. Make sure you're nice and secure. How are you feeling? Excited. <laughs> you're on tight. <laughs> There's a GoPro. Have a happy ride of your life. Canadá. <laughs> sí, yo, pero él no. <laughs> Ahí está su ropa. Sí, que tengo un inglés que quiero lo presto. Que se pasó sol arriba, corre mucho bien. Ah. Bueno. Do you want to wear uh, those glasses? It's a lot of wind. I'm gonna say fly it! No man can do like I can. I'm the queen of the lane. Mira. Mira tu tío. Mira, tu tío está volando. Ahí es, vamos ya. 
blunt. How was it? Yeah. I'll see. Okay. Nice. Ready? Yeah. Do this. You want to change? No. Is that your main goal or no? Do you think with this you can do it? I think if it's not your main goal, it serves. But if it's not, I would say it's normal. I'm going to put it up. That's crazy, man. <laughs> I got some good dogs to wash your mouth. Where is it? It's on your face. Is it stuck on me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. It's in my pocket. <laughs> I was like, what is that? It's on the camera the whole time. <laughs> Mommy's going flying, Elion. Mommy's going flying. <laughs> yep. All right. <laughs> now this is where I should be inserting the epic GoPro footage. But I lost it and I'm really choked about it, but you can see me from afar flying in the sky. Hey! She down. Crazy. Now she's close. Woo! So we just finished the paragliding. We're sitting in the grass here, doing a little grounding. I got my feet in there. And Leon's chilling right here. We're looking for food. Uh, the place your Reese is looking at is in Barranco. Is that the place that you said has the best ceviche? You said? Yes, sir. <laughs> and as you guys might already know, I'm vegan, so I'm just gonna check to make sure they have vegan options. But I'm sure you know we'll figure something out. Um, I'm going to reach to get his full experience of the place that has the best ceviche since... I went, we went to vegan last night. Exactly. Okay. Went to two vegan restaurants. Yeah. I mean, they were actually really good. Yeah. And ceviche is Peru's national dish, so of course he's got to try the best one in Lima. And yeah, let me just look at my and see what they got. But the paragliding was amazing! How did the paragliding feel? It was so sick. Uh, I literally felt like a bird. Uh, I was quite nervous at first. Uh, I told you guys I had to pee before I left, and I still didn't pee, so I didn't pee myself. <laughs> but when it happened is when he when he first landed, I was like, "You guys filmed it on your face," and I was like, "Oh my gosh, that's gum! His gum fell out and it was just stuck to his face." <laughs> I thought, so I like in like almost a minute, a minute going in, uh, I felt my gum fly out of my mouth, and I was like, "Oh, this sounds good. I thought it hit the guy behind me in the face." Um, but it turns out it was stuck to my own face. So. <laughs> At first I was like, what is that? Like there was something on your face and I was like, oh, it's gum. <laughs> Anyways, bro, so where we're going at is in Barranco and we'll see what else Barranco has to offer. Guys, we made it to the restaurant. This restaurant is supposed to be, well, according to one site that 
fully stacked out, you're supposed to have the best ceviche in all of Lima. So, and actually, he didn't order ceviche, but <laughs> he ordered um, shrimp risotto and some. It's called concha de la a la parmesan. Okay. So, and I ordered a stuffed avocado and the vegetable fried rice. Oh yeah, it's just chilling right here. What else do you have to say? Huh? Nothing? Okay. <laughs> okay, we're gonna try this stuffed avocado. Looks like it has some peppers in it, some carrots. I'm gonna make this a bite. I think I was literally going nuts right now. He wants to try it. Come here, here. I know he likes carrots. Eh, todavía no lo probé. He was like, um, has the salsa like you want for your food? I told him I haven't even tried it yet. <laughs> Creamy. The avocado is so good. I honestly didn't even, barely even got any other toppings, but the avocado itself is so creamy. I'm gonna play the avocado there. So good. I need to have hot sauce on it. So, so creamy. Right? And it would taste like crab. <laughs> Okay, it's not good. The other one's got a little bit. Oh, yeah. Gracias. I got my fried rice. Here's the other one. Oh, it's almond. How's it? So good. So good. What's it taste like? Uh, it's just like super like creamy, cheesy. Um, it's delicious. You know what's funny though? I remember you saying you don't like risotto. Really? <laughs> you remember telling me that? I don't think I've ever had risotto, man. <laughs> you were talking about the butt, man. We were, I don't even remember how it got brought up. I think I was saying I was. I don't know, we were just talking about it. Like, oh, you, you didn't say you like it, you like it's too much though. Oh, yeah, calm down. Okay, we're gonna add some lime juice to this. Let's see how it is with the lime juice. Wait, has Elliot never eaten meat? No? Is he allowed? No, of course not. Oh. Okay. We are going to eat some of this fried rice. That's right. Let's go. Very sweet sauce on it. It's so good. You're having it? I'm having it. <laughs> Okay, Reese is going in on his point chest. Uh, a little bit of lime, or, uh, lime on it. I don't really know how to eat these. I'm sure like a lot of people probably just scoop them out, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my fork, yeah. <laughs> 
I'm definitely not doing this right. But... No, don't do this right. Let's go, baby. So buttery, it's easy. Mm. Garlic thing? So good. Mm. Yeah, like an oyster. Okay, hey guys, so we just we just finished our meal and we are here. I believe this is it, the bridge of size. Um, it's a very historical bridge here in Barranco. Let me show you guys what it looks like. The Bridge of Sighs was inaugurated during the Municipal Administration of Mayor Francisco Garcia Montarreso on February 14, 1876. During the War of the Pacific, it was destroyed by Chilean troops passing through the place after being in the victorious Battle of the Chorrios on January 13, 1881. Alright, they recited it. Mujeres, that means woman. This must be it with all the like special writing and stuff. Oh, okay. The sign here, guys. It says "Hagamos un Peru que nos gustó," which means we're making the Peru that we like. So we are in front of what I believe is the actual bridge. We aren't positive. Bree says he thinks it's this one. Little walking bridge. I wonder if people actually live right here or if these are just like shops or something. These ones look like houses. You guys, I found a free art gallery right under this bridge. We've seen there's a free art gallery. Let's go see what they are displaying. Barranco is a city in the southern portion of the Lima Callao metro area. It lies along the Pacific coast at an elevation of 213 feet, that is 65 meters above sea level. Founded as a village beach resort in 1874, it became a town in 1873 and a city in 1901. Swim in there. The vultures? I swear, like, um,. The other day, where were we? I, I swear there were vultures passing by somewhere we were yesterday. See these birds right here? We're not positive, but they seem like they're vultures. They're not moving. Oh, there we go. There. Oh, there's a bunch of them together. Yeah. Are they fighting? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, the guys are running away. You don't want to fight. <laughs> like, bye. <laughs> I said to Reese, hey, we have to walk back under that bridge because I just have a feeling there's going to be a lot of beautiful art to see. And there might be more on that side of the street, so let's just go walk down there. The street art was so beautiful and I loved that there were so many different murals that had a lot of different meaning and so whenever I'm traveling around Latin America, I just love to go around and look at the different types of street art and kind of interpret the definitions of it and sometimes it has me pondering deeply about life this here says responda which means respond <laughs>
So we're just gonna hang to like a busy street. Some really good metaphors in this art. She's got a lot of weight on her shoulders, a lot of school books, bionic woman. So Elian passed out. Finally, he was way overtired. When we were in that restaurant, he was literally like going crazy, really restless, um, because on the way there, he had napped for like 10 minutes, nothing more. Now we're just walking down this pathway that's beside that museum. Due to its location with the coastal desert and the nearby Andes Mountains, the fauna in Lima is diverse, including species adapted to contrasting environments. You can find marine life such as different varieties of fish, anchovies, mackerel, sea bass, as well as sea lions and dolphins, which you can sometimes spot near the shore. You can find birds such as pelicans, gulls, terns on the coast, and urban birds such as sparrows, pigeons, doves. And in the surrounding valleys and mountains, you can find hummingbirds, finches, hawks, and eagles. The ambience of this area is super nice. You just finish going through the museums, looking at the street art, and then continue down this path, which leads you to all of the beautiful beaches of Lima. So the path down here is just leading to the beach. You can see the ocean from here. And right beside us, there are tons of vendors selling different types of jewelry. And a bunch of people just walking down here. Families. Couples. Beautiful vibes. Another common thing over here. There are a bunch of caricature artists everywhere. There was some by the museum there. And there's one behind me there. We have arrived here at the little lookout point. We have the ocean here on one side. And then we have the cliffs here on the other side. The economy of Peru is an emerging mixed economy characterized by a high level of foreign trade and an upper middle income economy classified by the World Bank. The country was one of the fastest growing economies in the world in 2012 with a GDP growth rate of 6.3%. The economy was expected to increase 93 in 2021 in a rebound from the COVID-19 pandemic in Peru. Peru has signed a number of free trade agreements with its main trade partners. China became the nation's largest trading partner for the following the China-Peru Free Trade Agreement signed on the 28th of April in 2009. Additional free trade agreements have been signed with the United States in 2006, Japan in 2011, and the European Union in 2012. Just getting an ice cream. Gracias. What kind of ice cream did you get? Uh, some lunch. Vanilla. Sublime. I wanted to kick out, but I didn't have it. <laughs> it's all good. How's the ice cream? It's all good. You said it's peanut butter, right? Oh, yeah. Nice. Guys, we have arrived at a beach here. We were walking along the water, and there just happens to be an actual beach, a little swimming area. The water seems pretty calm. There's beach chairs and stuff, so we are just gonna hang out around here and walk a little bit nearby and we're gonna catch a sunset here because the sun is setting and it's gonna be beautiful. So that guys was the mini beach. We are arriving at a much larger beach, so we're just gonna roll up, find a spot, and catch a nice sunset. Here, me and Elian are at the water. The sun's setting right behind us. There we go. You hear those waves, it's so soothing. And so crazy the ocean always. My brother didn't want to come all the way to the water. So I was like, you know what? Why don't 
to get hit here. I'm gonna take Eliana over to the shore because I just need to hear the waves. I need to feel the ocean in my feet in order to feel, to feel grounded, connected with who I am from inside, with nature. If you've watched my videos before, especially ones where I'm by the ocean, then you would know that this is something that's so important to me to always seek out the ocean and sand, waves, sunsets. It's just it's everything that I need to feel like me. It's so beautiful. Okay guys, we have ordered from El Chino Vigano again. This is a Chinese poke bowl, they called it. This is one of their traditional soups. I got some juice, I'll take it out in a second. And I also got a dessert, I'll show you that after. Elian's working on some tofu right now. He loves tofu, you like tofu? Yeah, is it yummy? Te gusta? Let's try this soup. with the chile, but not spicy. Reminds me of this guajillo soup I used to make when I was in Mexico. Wow. Really reminds me of that because when I was um, in Mexico, I'd literally make, it wouldn't be with like this kind of spaghetti. I would make guajillo soup, very similar tasting to this, but with soy chunks, and this also has soy chunks in it, and with a different type of pasta, like macaroni style, but it's really good. Want to try some honey? Peruvian potatoes are literally something else. I'll hear about this. Potato. Ah! Failure. Okay, I'm gonna try. So this juice, I forgot what they call it, but it is the juice that they make from purple corn. They put some other spices in there. So I just grab what they are. Here we go, guys. Here we go, Okay. We're gonna go in to this bowl. Now from this restaurant, I've ordered pasta that comes with these setas before, these tamal mushrooms, and it was so good. Mmm, it was fun. Look up, my baby. Okay. 
The salsa that they added on the side is really nice and fresh. simple. This is good. Nice and fresh. I'll be back with you for the dessert. Okay guys, finally we have this coconut cake. It smells so good. Don't judge me, I'm just gonna <laughs> clean off these chopsticks and use these. Hold on. Stay clean and lick it off. Okay. This look smells delicious. Mmm. Want to touch them, baby? Caramelly coconutty, kind of like toasted coconutty caramelly. There's flakes of fresh coconut all throughout it. The cake is honestly sometimes I find cakes are too moist. This cake is it's right in the center between moist. It's just perfect. <laughs> I was gonna say right in the center between moist and dry, but that sounds kind of weird. And that is it for our Limo video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed our time in Lima. Right now, my brother is on a little bus trip. He is heading to meet me in Arequipa, and I'm flying there right now. We're at the airport. We're about to get some pizza with no cheese at Pizza John's. Papa John's, sorry. Um, we're right by the gates. We haven't eaten through security yet. And that's why I would always recommend you guys to arrive early so you can make sure you get food, get everything that you need. Um, we have a couple hours until our flight, actually, like, almost three hours into our flight. Um, it's a really short flight. It's only going to be an hour and a half. And I will see you guys in my next video. Be sure to stay tuned, subscribe if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it. Um, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any videos, including our next video coming up for Arequipa. And like the video if you like the video. Comment down below what your favorite part of the video was. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!